Lindsay, tell me about your story you mentioned uh, to me. Uh, so let's like kind of dive in there. So what was the condition that you were facing? So actually, um, a lot of mine is like women's health issues. I've had them pretty much my whole life, which is mm -hmm. weird. Um, so I just had chronic pain, just kind of like burning pains mm -hmm. um, that just kind of came up and I had them for like about two years before I even kind of found Dr. B. So that was pretty much what was going on before that and just trying to figure out problems. But I've actually been to multiple doctors, just regular doctors yeah. and gotten a lot of tests and lab tests done and things like that. And nobody could ever really tell me what was wrong with me. So, hmm. you know, and it's just nothing that I could talk to anybody about really, you know, yeah. nobody understands or they think that you're crazy or, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because tests are telling them nothing's wrong. So, yeah. So this is actually the first time I've actually gotten validation that, you know, maybe something really isn't right and there's actually an action plan that I can actually do something instead of feeling frustrated and kind of alone in the whole situation. So what did that validation feel like for you? Pretty amazing. I think Dr. B was laughing at me because I was just like, oh my God, like when I got my test back, I was just so excited because I was just like, finally, somebody tells me like, it's real, I'm not crazy. So, because um, I think a lot of a lot of women go through that and, and you don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about things that are embarrassing or private, Or, but I feel like that's something that we need to talk about and it shouldn't be so scary to do that because yeah. especially being young, you know, you want to kind of put up this perfect persona that nothing's ever wrong and I'm always great and mm. you know and, and my private things are private but at the same time everyone's going through it so true you should be talking about it because then maybe we can actually do something about it so true so. thank you and thank you for taking your stand by being here and sharing today because I know that takes courage yeah <laughs> did, did that take courage for you it's a little nerve-wracking but I think I've gotten to the point where I just feel like I could help people so why not Mm -hmm. I mean, what's there to lose? I'm not that embarrassed about it anymore, so. Yeah, good for you. But you were before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, here come a girl. <laughs> yeah. We tend to be, you know, we try to be superwoman, but yeah. at the same time, it's, you know, if your body's telling you something and you're not listening to it, or I think it, it gets to the point, too, where um, you just think that that's normal, that mm -hmm. me feeling bad is just how it's going to be the rest of my life. You know, I'm tired or I'm you know, in pain or I'm sick all the time, you know, but I think a lot of people accept that as reality. Yeah. That's just how it's going to be forever. And this is just how I'm normally going to feel. But once you realize that it's not normal, then it's, it's kind of enlightening. So, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And so what were the symptoms and what was the experience that, that you had like, uh, because it sounded like it got kind of bad in order for you to keep trying so mm. hard and being willing. Yeah, so you know, what was this experience like? So it was basically, um, I mean, I've always had issues my whole life, um, constantly in and out of the gynecologist. So it's just, I don't know if it was just, well, I found out it was really my gut, but mm -hmm. I've been on antibiotics like my entire life, you know, yeah. and that was just something my family did. My mother was the same way, you know, I've kind of inherited her bad genes too, so yeah. she'll kill me for saying that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so um, it was really just um, constant infections, like always feeling pain all the time, even in my joints, like um, female pain as well, um, just all the time. So it's just like a constant feeling. So just even where I couldn't even focus at work, I couldn't really do anything. Mm. And I would just, you know, it affects your life. It affects your relationships yeah. big time, you know, it affects everybody because your mood is never there you know <clears throat> and I'm always like a pretty happy person and pretty happy-go-lucky so for me to like feel that way and try to hide it all the time and act like I feel okay and um, you know and taking medications to cover it up which you know that's never a good thing so because you know you want to take pain medicine which that's the worst part because that helps but at the same time you know it's really bad for you so mm -hmm. that's kind of where you, you kind of get to that line where you're like, do I want to do this for the rest of my life or do I want to try to figure out what the problem is? Um, so yeah, I've been dealing with that since I was basically, you know, a teenager. So <laughs> I think every girl thinks it's normal after a while because everyone I talk to has the same kind of issues. So, yeah. um, well, after I talk to them about it and they finally admit it, but hmm. it's pretty common. And I think that, um, Doctors do what they can do, but at the same time, they're not looking at you from a holistic standpoint. They're looking at you from, these are the symptoms, these are what we can do to control it, and if we can't find a problem, we'll keep looking, but at the same time, you know, you're, you're 
out of money and you're out of mm -hmm. options. So, you know, moving, moving to Austin was the best thing I did because I can actually find options. So yeah, it's nice. Amazing. And you mentioned with antibiotics and the gynecologist mm -hmm. and like having the female uh, issues and it sounds like candida is something that you had to overcome. Big time. Yeah. 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 Antibiotics cause sounds like some of it. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've, I've just been on so many my whole life. I mean, even when I was born, I had a collapse lung. I'm sure they put me on antibiotics for that. Yeah. So I feel like it's just that constant. And I never really knew that was the problem. So I started doing some research till I, you know, finally saw Dr. B and figured out, okay, well maybe there is like another underlying issue that I'm not thinking of. Cause you don't think of that. You just think my immune system's off or, you know, but now I know how incredibly strong, you know, candida mm -hmm. can be, it yeah. really can, and it's very hard to get rid of. And I think that's kind of a chronic issue with a lot of people that don't yeah. understand it. Did that cause any depression, anxiety for you or not? I used to have it when I was in high school, yeah. um, big time. And it does, I mean, after a while, especially with dealing with all the doctor stuff that I've been going through and all the tests and, you know, people just being like, I don't know. And that's, really brings you down. It just makes you feel like you're just lost and there's nowhere to go. And what do I do now? Like, do I really have to deal with this forever? And is this what my life is going to be like? So, well, yeah, it definitely affects you big time. What's the feeling that's coming up for you right now? Uh, just, it's just the frustration and um, just the feeling of, you know, just hopelessness, I guess. You can remember that feeling? Yeah, it's hard. So. But everything is getting better. So yeah. That's just so have to keep be positive about it. But what's it like for you right now, reliving the, those memories? I mean, it's it's painful. It's hard. It's it affected a lot of things in my life. You know, my relationship and my husband and you know me, my personality in general. I don't like feeling pain and feeling like I have to pretend to be somebody that I'm not. You know, and just feeling that horrible feeling when they're like. Uh, the tests come back negative and just kind of your heart drops and, you know what do I do <laughs> what do I do now you know so and they have no direction for you at all so you're just pretty much on your own you have to figure it out and what does it feel like to think that maybe is not a solution and that that's just your your life I mean it's not much of a life I guess so yeah, it, it definitely takes a hold of you and you have to try to get yourself out of that funk that you get into. So it's, I mean, it's hard to accept. I don't want to accept that that's who I am forever. That's just not possible. So you have to be able to live and that's not a life to be in pain all the time. Wow. So and you're one of the lucky ones because you kept questioning, whereas a lot of people, they, they do listen. Mm -hmm. Like if they're more compliant, or is you're a little bit more defiant, mm -hmm. but if they're more compliant, that that can that can really lead them into that place where they accept it. And yeah. do you ever feel the bitterness come in? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. It's, it's really frustrating because who just, were you angry at? Just the mentality of everybody in general. That it's just what somebody says and that's it. And you know, nobody's looking at, at people from a different standpoint. Like there's not that view of maybe a natural way is a better way. Maybe the reason we have all these problems is, you know, the medications and you know, that people are trying to get a quick fix to fix things, but it's not happening, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but that mentality's not changing and it, it gets really infuriating because there's so many things you can do and there's so many ways you can look at it. And, you know, I feel like that's starting to come out. Like now we're starting to get that push towards a natural way of living, but it's, it's also, there's so much, you know, criticism of it or people not understanding it. And, um, and then I hear people having the same problems as me and, you know, but they're not as open-minded and they accept what somebody tells them or, you know, and just deal with it. So I just don't understand that. But mm. wow. Hopefully it'll change. Yeah, and <clears throat> it'll change for those that, you know, are there initiating the change or mm -hmm. saying yes to it. And so, yeah. and so sadly, it's not always the people we want it to be. Yeah. And, and yet, but it's, I mean, it's true for you. And that's what's beautiful. And that, and, you know, look at what's happened in your life. 
So let's uh, let's have a look at that for a second. I, I appreciate you kind of reaching into some of those emotions and going through that experience because it's actually quite interesting from a couple of standpoints. One is that the depression, and it sounds like actually depression rather than anxiety. I think that you know this is just my layman's like observation mm-hmm. that what has what what happened for you was that had a lot of health challenges that were causing physical pain and all these types of things and then when you kept getting uh basically the, the communication to you on a on a heart emotional level was uh this is incurable you are stuck like the doctor just said that the tests are negative sorry we don't know right but what was being communicated to you and that the reason why your reading of that if if it had have been which is just you know we can't go back in time Mm -hmm. and nor you know you were only dealing with the information that you knew but if you had have heard i'm not qualified to answer this question my test was insufficient you have a problem that can be fixed Mm -hmm. and you just need to find the right person and they're out there and then the depression may not have seeped in as much but what was communicated you know, through the words, then I can see how it causes depression and it's based on a reality that's Mm -hmm. happening. Well, it's like, well, I'm not being given hope. This is really important to me. It's affecting my life and nobody's helping me. I feel depressed. That makes sense. Yeah, big time. Is that, does that feel right what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I mean, if somebody would have given me some, something to hang on to, I, you know, I'm, I'm just an ambitious person. I would have found it. I, whatever it is, you know, because mm-hmm. when you get to that breaking point of I will do anything, <laughs> mm. you know, it's it's very disheartening when someone tells you that you're fine. Yeah. So, and if they would have said a different way, then yeah, I would have done it in a minute. Mm-hmm. Just tell me, <laughs> I'll do it. Or even if you could have interpreted it in a different way. So for those right. people that are listening right now, yes. That's, that's the beautiful thing. Like you may have, you know, the person listening, you look, you might have no one believing you. Mm-hmm. You might have no one helping you right now, but they are out there and your body does have a solution and a right. cure and let that be a light, a candle in a dark place. Yes. And it will lead you. Big time. It's beautiful. And, but, but I really appreciate that because we're looking at different causes for depression. That's certainly a really big one that's not talked about, which is, you know, circumstance. And in this case, a circumstance that rubs hope. Mm-hmm. And, and that is a, and, and in this case, it could happen financially, like where it's like, I'm going to, you know, there's nothing I can do to fix my finances. Sure. I'm headed for oblivion. Yeah. It's going to affect my family. How does that reflect on me as a you know, father and provider or, or a woman as a, you know, an independent woman, you know, whatever that is mm-hmm. and how that translates can be, can cause depression. And that's it. That's a key. But then the other thing that's interesting for you, and, and then how do you turn that around if you're listening? Well, how you turn that around is that y- you trust that there is an answer and mm-hmm. there is a solution, and that you you uh, you you dive deep into solutions. And that's why I've created this. So they're watching this right now. So you're at right. the right place. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so thank you. Know, sure. You know, thank our lucky stars. Thank God for connecting us. But um, but yeah, back to you. What I think is as well that your depression may have deepened over the years Mm -hmm. because if you had an assault to your microbiome at that level since you're a baby, you had candida overgrowth, caused lots of female issues, all those things would uh, compound where if your gut flora is like continually damaged, like imagine you in your 50s. I, I would I would imagine you could go into some pretty deep depression, oh, yeah. um, and let alone the hope factor, but take that aside, just the gut issue itself. So anyway, back to you though. What did you do to fix it? So I'm still on the journey. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a long road and it takes a lot of dedication yeah. and determination and you have to be very disciplined. And I think that's the hard part for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, it was hard for me, I mean, to, you know, get on a strict diet, you know, no sugar and really clean up everything and understand what's healthy for you and what you should be eating and you know with growing up on fast food (laughs) it was very different you know Mm -hmm. in the midwest so now that i'm starting to understand what's important and what i should be putting in my body and then you know and starting to get on the proper um, supplements so do i did all the genetic uh, testing and like blood panels and things like that and found out, you know, there are deficiencies that I've had that I just get from my parents, you know, didn't know about. 
yeah. which explained a lot of like fatigue and you know brain fog and not sleeping because I never sleep. So mm-hmm. um, things like that that really explained a lot. And even just having that off balance too is going to affect everything. So yeah. and it definitely affected me big time. So. Um, it's nice to actually sleep through the night now. <laughs> okay, so you can get, well, how, how did that yeah. happen? How did you get good sleep? Um, I just started taking care of myself and taking my supplements and starting to um, just be disciplined with it. Yeah. You know, taking what I need to take after finding out with my tests and working with Dr. B and figuring out where the problems were and then you know her putting me on supplements, the regimen that I needed to be on. And I slowly just started to get my energy back. I started to feel good again. So, you know, my husband saw it too. <laughs> yeah? So, yeah. What was that like for him? I think he was really worried about me. And then, you know, now he's like, I want to do it myself. So he's already on board and already setting up an appointment. So, really? Yeah. I mean, he is chronically sick too. You know, he gets really horrible sinus infections all the time. He's had surgeries and everything else. And, you know, I think it, I can see the symptoms too. Um, it reminds me of myself. So. We're both kind of in the same boat, mm-hmm. <laughs> really. But um, I mean, just starting starting this regimen and really the biggest thing was diet. Diet was so huge. It definitely changed my life um, and me starting to feel like a normal person again. Mm-hmm. So, which it's been a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, so. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So it sounds like you, you have had a pretty strong result. It sounds like you're still in the journey, but you've had a strong mm-hmm. result. How long has it been? Um, I have been working with uh, Dr. V probably like about five months. Yeah. So, I mean, just over that time and me just putting everything I have into it, because I mean, I have nothing else to lose. Mm. It's, it's either that or pain. So that's kind of where I'm at now. So. Yeah, got it. And, and you mentioned pain. We haven't gone in detail there. How would you describe the pain? Um, it's just kind of like a chronic burning all the time. Really? So, yeah. Where? where? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. It's it's horrible. So I can't even. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. So. Huh. Yeah. And and then how does that affect your um, your marriage? Um, <laughs> it it does, but um, I know I'm blushing now. Yeah. Um. So. Well, I, and and I speak because my wife and I have been through uh, challenges that affected intimacy based on mm-hmm. trauma from her past and oh, yeah. and then the trauma that I triggered with me and the, the the mix of those factors and what it was like to kind of recover and right. and, and work on it and that type of thing but yeah, it's it sounds like sense. you're it sounds like you're 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 right on the edge there of of, of turning that Try. around it sounds like you've had a, a big recovery to an extent and it sounds like you've got you've got a little ways to go yeah. But for you to see the other symptoms improvements, it sounds like you, you're filled with hope. It's giving me some, yeah, finally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not all the way there, but I'm, I'm seeing it finally instead of covering it. Yeah. Where, you know, I feel good and then the next day I feel miserable. So yeah. at least it's me doing it on my own and I feel a little empowered that way. Yeah. So I'm doing it myself. Like I'm not waiting or taking a pill or, you know, it's just going to take work. That's yeah. kind of the hard part. Yeah. And you know, I feel like I'm turning back into myself how I was before, you know, when we first got married and mm. feeling good again and, you know, we can do things together and, you know, be together. So yeah. that's really important for me because, I mean, he's been very patient <laughs> with yeah. me through all of this and dealing with, you know, the, you know, me being depressed and me trying to figure things out and, um, I mean, it's just nice to have support. If you don't have that, then you, you would feel really lost. So without that, I don't know what I would have done without him. So. Wow. Yeah. What would you like to say to him right now? I love him. That he's mm. the best. And he'll do anything for me, and I can talk to him about anything. So I'm not embarrassed. I'm not, you know, ashamed. But, I mean, all the support, I mean, financially alone, that he's done for me is... I couldn't have done myself. So mm. he's making me a better person physically, mm. <laughs> which is very, very good. So That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm actually really excited about one thing. I, you saw us chatting out there. There's a few things that Dr. B is learning right now that I think is going to 
be like a missing link. Mm -hmm. It was a, a missing link because because we were all learning it. I mean, I created entire series trying to find answers to certain things and it's only been until recently, like over the last couple of months, we've discovered some formulas that like work like nothing else we've ever seen before and it makes a lot of sense and somebody like you that's been dedicated to learning for so long, I think you'll make sense of this. There's something in your body that's impeding its ability to heal itself mm -hmm. because your body can heal itself and Oh, um, I had one of my doctor friends discuss this with me even just a week ago and it was, he was talking about the fact that if you get surgery, the fact that you recover from the surgery has very little, it has almost nothing to do with the surgery itself, it's the body's ability to heal itself after mm -hmm. the surgery and, um, and then if I was to, you know, if you were to have a cut and the cut was dirty mm -hmm. and it was perpetually dirty, would it heal? An infection. It would never heal, right? Mm -hmm. It would literally never heal if it was dirty. Mm -hmm. You cannot heal a dirty wound. So, and this is true for the body. Look at us all, right? So, um, and so that's where a lot of us are just this hair away from colla you know, collateral damage yeah. because our system isn't isn't prepared. That's why you ha you hear a cancer diagnosis that takes somebody down mm -hmm. because the body isn't able to heal itself because it's got something that's impeding it. So what's the thing that's impeding your healing? I'm saying that it's some things that you might not have outlined yet. I think some of the biggest triggers are heavy metal toxicity, parasitic infection, mm -hmm. candida, um, other bacterial infection, but things that all can be eliminated through herbs and supplementation mm -hmm. and minerals that uh, help to cleanse and chelate, which is to draw heavy, heavy metals and toxins. Right. Um, so, there's some formulas that are not expensive at all that um, Dr. V is, is using. And so, if you're willing to be one of the case studies that we're like watching, you know, observing as they go through this process, see what it does to your symptoms, then that would, um, would that be something you'd, you'd be interested in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. we've already um, established that I do have parasitic infections. So. Great. Um, we're already starting Great. to try to get rid of it. And Great. It's crazy how common it is. So yeah, absolutely. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> absolutely. And you can just understand like that they may not necessarily be having a direct correlation with mm -hmm. the, uh, the, you know, the women's issues or the yeast overgrowth, yeah. but what they can be doing is stopping your body from being able to heal the yeast overgrowth. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the key. Yeah. And so... Um, anyway, so this is going to be great. So I'm looking forward to this. And your pain levels, how have they, how have they subsided? I mean, it's, um, it's not all the time now. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it is very directly correlated with diet too. Yeah. So um, I have to keep, keep clean. Otherwise, you know, if I start to cheat, it does kind of flare up. What are the foods that hurt you? Um, anything with sugar, basically rice, potatoes, gluten too. Yeah. Um, is another trigger for me. So um, I pretty much stayed away from all of that and it's made a big difference, but... How bad's the trigger with gluten? Um, it's, it's pretty bad, so yeah. it's just really... Um, and then, of course, it's in your body for so long, so if you're not even digesting properly, you know, it can last for days. Yeah. It just, you know, it's just that toxin is just still in you, it feels like. Yeah. So you just have to... Interesting. ...really stick with the Cold diet. Cold turkey. Oh yeah. No cheating. If I cheat, I, I'm gonna pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Is it worth it? Um, what cheating? Yeah. <laughs> I have cheated, but. But is it worth um, it? No, it's really not. Yeah. Because usually I'm the next day I'm miserable again. So. Yeah. But it's it's getting better. So now I'm just starting to see like the slow improvement, and I know it wasn't gonna be overnight. I mean, I didn't get here overnight. Yeah. It's been years, so there's no way there's gonna be a quick fix with it. True. But. True, it can, take, it can take longer. However, however, some of the things that we're gonna share with you will maybe alter your perception of, of speed because, mm -hmm. because I do believe in the long journey. I also believe that there's some things that can be uncovered quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that you might have a bit of a paradigm shift, which is an exciting thought. Yeah, very. Yeah, and, and you know, my, my family's gone through a lot with health and we've, we've applied these things ourselves. So I'm not just talking as a researcher, I'm talking about somebody that's done it themselves. Mm. Um, so, all right, let's, uh, 
I, I'm glad you covered the gluten issue. It's, it's an issue. Um, it does cause pain. Do you find yourself okay with spelt bread or with buckwheat or amaranth or another one of the gluten-free alternatives? Yeah, I've tried a couple options and haven't had as much of a reaction. As much or, or like any or? Um, I mean, because sometimes I can't tell what triggers it, but I mean, I know yeah. the foods that will, yeah. um, and that's definitely one of them. So, you know, I can't go out and have pizza. I can't, you know, yeah. have any kind of bread or anything like that. And it, it Unless it's gluten-free gluten -free yeah, bread? Yeah, that's about it. It does work? Um, it does. To me, I, I, I just worry about anything that's even an alternative, because yeah. just because of the sugar. You yeah. Know? Because no matter what, it's going to feed my body. So and I think that, careful. like, if we, if we can uncover some of these root issues, that you you might find that then not with gluten but with these alternatives spelt being an example right. yeah. however however I, I do hear the other guys that are just like look if you got a sensitivity then off it you know get rid of it but but I think that it to me signals that the transformation hasn't been complete yeah so that's where that's where I think that that will be exciting to explore it because it if your body then can handle spelt and the reason why I believe gluten is the biggest is issue and the issue that it is today is because it happens to be genetically altered, not genetically spliced, therefore mm -hmm. it's not a GMO, therefore it's labeled as organic and it's just as deadly yeah. as anything else that's GMO because it's, it's a genetic alteration that happened in the 60s where it yields 10 times as much as what it used to. Mm -hmm. They've been altering it since 1843. Wow. And it happens to have a whole disease classification around it, celiac disease. So people are noticing that, and it's and it's arguable that the vast array of autoimmune conditions, the the highest of the triggers may be in fact gluten because it's entering into the bloodstream. And the reason why it's doing that is because it's it's got toxic poisons and chemicals that are connected with GMOs, and the proteins can't be digested properly. This gliden and and, and then if it's crossing the intestinal walls and it's in the bloodstream, the body then now has to attack it. And then we say, oh no, like the body's, you know, you've got an autoimmune disease, the body's attacking self, we just need to stop it. And it's like, no, you need to stop what's making it attack mm -hmm. because you're joining toxins to your body. So there's gonna be collateral damage. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the body's fault. It mm -hmm. never has been, um, but Great, I'm excited in your journey. That's a really great story. I'm excited about the rest of the journey. I'd love, would you be willing to stay in touch with me as we continue like, oh, yeah. in, in your journey? Where would you rate yourself on a, on a spectrum if you were, you know, where were you, where are you today from one to like 100%? So I'd say I'm about um, 60 to 70 now. Yeah. So it's- That's a lot. It's, yeah. Where were you before? I mean, I was pretty much rock bottom yeah. before. There was no, yeah, there was really no up for a while. But now I'm feeling a lot better. And I, it just, it's nice to have like something to go through. You know, now I'm doing the gut healing with her and just started that. And it's like a three month regimen and, you know, trying to get myself back to balance. Yeah. So I feel like I'm getting there. It's just, uh, I just have to stick with it. And try, <laughs> and mm. not cheat. That's the hardest part, so. It's great. Yeah. I, some of the things we're about to help you with, I think will help you from cheating as well. I, I believe there's a reason why we want to cheat. And I think it's because of uh, parasitic infections. If you, look, mm. if you look up what it is that they crave, right. it's salt and sweet. Um, which, salt is not inherently bad, but you know, obviously like the fast food chains, it's all based on those combinations. Yeah. It's that type of salt sweet that they're, they're looking for. and and they're also craving more than what we ought to eat. Uh, not in all cases, but... Um, no, I definitely had that. Yeah, excessive cravings for food yeah, and just overeating. I mean, once I, I went through, because I went through a really strict diet for about two months, where I had zero sugar of anything. You yeah. know, it was just meat and vegetables and fruit, or very limited fruit. Yeah. But um, I mean, and now I really, my cravings have gone down big time. So there you go. Like I don't even want a lot of the things that you know, like my husband wants. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So well. I actually turn it down. I'm like, oh, it's not really what I'm feeling like. I actually feel like something fresh. And well, that's a really great example. Thank you for sharing that because I just want the person watching to know that the cravings will will stop. Oh yeah, it will go away. Yeah, but you've got to stand up to it. Yes. Yeah. That's the hard part. Is that first 
that first month was rough. Yeah. <laughs> but hope allows you to stand yes, up to it. Yes. It to know that it's not better. always going to be like that. Oh yeah. It'll get way better. And then yeah. your energy will pop right back up and you'll feel like a million bucks afterwards. So yeah. that's, <laughs> everybody noticed. Yeah. So it will happen. I promise. Hmm. <laughs> And what's the emotion coming up for you right now? I'm just excited. I'm Why? just because uh, I am so excited for people to hear this, and for you know maybe there's somebody else that was me or is me right now, you know, and and this is something that can become a trend. And yeah. move forward, that's what I was just telling Dr. V that she's creating an army. So, yeah. so great. <laughs> we're gonna spread it. So that's so our great. job. What would you say with women's health? Your particular challenge. I actually haven't done a lot in my films on this. However, mm -hmm. I, you know, we've done a lot on infertility and. And we're, we're even talking about like women's health in the aspect of where, you know, when we're encouraging supplements, when women are trying to fall pregnant, we're encouraging yeah. uh, women to take supplements that allow like for really great, um, you know, you know, for the sex organs so they can, mm -hmm. um, things are just all functioning properly. So, so we are interested in this subject. We want to help people and you're yeah. one of the few people that are willing to kind of, you know, talk about the experience as a whole what would you say to to women that are struggling in, in those kinds of conditions what what's the answer that you found that that's been effective to help with your with your health because you've had a really significant improvement and yeah. and I think that you're going to complete that journey really soon so what, what would you say what's the, what's the answers what's the keys it's it's just it's so hard because as a woman you're put on Drug after drug after drug. I mean, every time you get something. I mean, women, we get a lot of infections. It's just how it kind of works mm. in the beginning, you know. And you're put on antifungals, you're put on antibacterials, and just so much that it's almost like a cycle. You're constantly dealing with these things. And it's just so hard to talk about to anybody, you know. And, and we don't talk about it to men either. <laughs> so, mm. because it's personal, it's private, but I just, it's so common. It's crazy. When I talk to people, I'm like, why didn't you ever tell me that you were having issues? You know, I have the same thing. And, you know, I've done things that made me feel better. And, you know, and I think doing a natural way first and, you know, going through the gut first and finding the root problem, we just never do that. And it's just going to keep happening. And it's just going to get worse because we're just going to keep doing things to destroy our bodies. And I think that that's where women need to understand that it's not always just something you can go take a pill and you're better in a couple of days, you know, seven days. It's really about fixing the core problem and finding what the core problem is. But, you know, a lot of doctors don't do that. And we don't know any better. No one tells you that, you know. And then after, what, 30 years of me doing the same things over and over, and mm. now I find out, you know, my body's just can't handle it anymore, of mm. all the things I've done to it. And um, I think this is the time when, you know, women need to understand why and get a better explanation and actually cure the problem, the real problem because they don't know what it is. And I think it's time for people to start talking and actually creating a dialogue about it because no one talks about women's health that way. Mm. It's embarrassing, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not at the same time, you know? It's your wife, it's your mother, it's your sister, it's your friend, yeah. you know? You gotta let people know yeah. and create a dialogue about it because if you don't, then, you know, it's just gonna keep happening and people are gonna be miserable in silence because women are good at that. Mm. <laughs> so hopefully that'll change, but. I think if they start understanding it better and seeing doctors that are willing to open their minds and look at it a different way, then actually, you know, these things won't be common anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my goal is for that to end. So amazing. Now you're you're here. You know a little bit about what we do. What do you think about what do you think about what we're creating here and what it could do for people? I think it's amazing. That's why I want to be part of it. Just because I think. I mean, getting this information out, nobody really knows about it or really thinks about it, you know, so I, I think what you guys are doing is amazing, especially with depression and anxiety, which is just kind of a chronic issue and everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that we're not embracing nature and embracing these natural things, we're working against it and that, you know, that will cause problems and I think there's a way that we can do that holistically, you know, mm -hmm. take care of ourselves, but it's just the information, nobody has that. or nobody believes it. So mm -hmm. I think if there's legitimate people going through it and talking about it, this is the time when people will understand and start to say, okay, what worked for them? You know, I had the same kind of issues and finally someone says something and it's some hope, something to try, just like me, you know, it's something to try. It gives me hope and makes me feel like 
I'm not alone and I can do it. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I. It's my prayer that this reaches the people it needs to reach, mm -hmm. and I just trust. I just have to trust that it will, and that it's going to create the ripple that it deserves to create. Mm -hmm. And I think that our, our dedication for this was excellence, and it was transformation, and it was uh, a dogged determination to find the answer at any cost to ego, to mm -hmm. to yeah. to anything. Yeah. And because because it, it's that important. And, and, it, and it means questioning everything. And it means, it means looking at something that's good and how can we make it better? And it means looking at something that's great, how can we make it better? And, and that's why like, you, you notice with me that even though I'm working with all these great doctors and they're doing these amazing things with their patients, I'm always saying, but I think it could be better if you use this from over here, and, but, but I don't know, let's try <laughs> it. Like, I mean, who am I? Let's, and then, and then, but we, we we found things. It's incredible what we're seeing. The, the kinds of things that we're, we're seeing turn around, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. So thank you, Lindsay. You're the best. Um, looking forward <laughs> to uh, continuing with your journey.